Service to Amazons, particularly for airfield bases, have stirred up a bit of a controversy within the War Thunder community as of recent. Obviously, it engages with several different topics, including that of multiple different game modes, and obviously how it affects the player base in general, and whether it does anything for gameplay balance. First off, let's backtrack a little bit, as we have just seen the second evolution of the dev server. That presented a heap of new changes, and on the second iteration, they also introduced the serviced air missile for airfield defense, as well as radar-guided systems based upon ground vehicles. So now you'll see them scattered across an airfield location. But what is a surface-to-air missile? Known as a ground-to-air missile, or surface-air-guided weapon, it's a missile designed to be launched from the ground to destroy aircraft flying in a designated airspace. Now, there are three kinds of surface-to-air missile. There are your smaller, faster, lightweight, generally shorter range, but faster uh, missiles. You've got your larger heavyweights. They tend to be more uh, fuel load, longer distance, and they can go up to higher altitudes, And but they're sort of a uh, lower maneuverability. And then there's obviously a man pads, which is a, even lower missile performance. But that's really the basics you need to know. In War Thunder, we're using surfaced air missiles based upon ground vehicles. They're not actual man pads. They're not actual facilities that hold permanent positions, so to speak, like you see in the thumbnail of the video. And unfortunately, it has generated quite a bit of discussion of whether it's going to be a benefit or a net negative for the game to have surfaced air missile systems based at airfields. But it's something that's been requested for a very long time due to the fact that, well, you know, we have 60s and 70s jets, yet our airfields are covered in World War II technology that are our only line of defense when we're landing and taking off. On the one hand, I appreciate the amount of AAA there is at airfields currently that allows me to land with some sort of vague security that allows me to repair and rearm. On the other hand, there are a lot of users who tend to use that as a sort of base camping arena where they can just climb around the airfield and then extend matches out for 10 minutes or longer. And this tends to be, you know, your bomber and attacker kind of pilots. Even in top tier jets, you see jets who have been crippled in a first engagement go back to the airfield to only realize that their team has utterly collapsed. They're the last one left and they are extending a match out by a considerable amount of time than it should be. So there is an argument to be had on what you do rather than how you play. Because ultimately here, what we have is a dilemma. You want to play the game, but you also need to rearm and, and, and obviously refuel get some more ammunition and get back into the fight. But how do you do that in a balanced way that allows for extra protection without being too broken? Well, I'm not entirely sure here on this kind of response. The airfield SAMs currently on the dev server, at least they feel, you know, useful. But the problem is aircraft have now really outgrown their maps. You're in a really tiny box and the AAA guns that are meant to deal with propeller driven aircraft are now dealing with top tier jets and you're playing in a way that really didn't happen in the real world. Obviously you had naval screening and then you had air fighters and, and cover and different sort of things like that as well as radar. But you also had command guidance which is a type of missile guidance in which a ground station or aircraft relays a signal to a guided missile via radio control or through a wire connecting the missile to the launcher and tells the missile where to steer in order to intercept its target. But as you can see here, it, these are just ground-based uh, vehicles launching surface-to-air missiles from their systems. They're not actual, I guess, this useful here. Imagine if I was strafing an airfield right in front of you right here, and this is what was happening. But is this a game mode per se issue? Is this realistic? Is this ground forces? Is this going to be a persistent issue in simulator battles? There's too many problems with a system like this being implemented. Unfortunately, there is no real data to back that up. And the way that the game is designed to be, team deathmatch and player versus player, there is no real way you can properly stop airfield campers or people who abuse uh, that kind of thing, or maybe late spawns or people trying to extend the game out in order to balance this kind of issue, right? 
But I don't see the controversy that was being driven up by both sides. On one hand, you need to land in relative protection, but you shouldn't be invulnerable. This game is a team deathmatch. After all, your primary objective is to kill and, you know, basically secure kills on other players. That is your primary role. And if the base has a little more added protection here, time will tell whether or not this has been a good decision for those of us who, who like to rearm, and for those of us who really don't like those airfield strafers, airfield campers, or people who extend a match out beyond the extended period of battle time. Unfortunately, this is just another one of those issues that War Thunder tends to have. It's almost like bomber aircraft in a way. And while it does expose a number of issues, I'm sure this isn't the end of the world. Granted, let me know what you think of surface-to-air missiles in the comments down below. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one, hey? Eh?